Hey guys, welcome back to another Tech Tip Tuesday. Today is a real world experience and a lesson uh, that we think we want to share with you guys that will improve the function of your brakes, not only TBM, but any brakes. And it kind of breaks down how a caliper works and how the piston works in conjunction with the bore of the caliper. So here we go. So this came from a uh, customer. Uh, they basically reported, hey, I know I've seen your videos about TBM brakes and how they free spin so easily. And uh, they do. They're designed to uh, have the pistons actually come back into bore when you let off the pedal. This allows them to spin freely. And uh, that not only improves chassis dynamics, but also takes the friction out of it, which can improve ET reaction time. And then also the pad life and rotor life on your brakes something we pride ourselves on and uh, with a properly set up brake it will do this in perpetuity forever so what are we talking about today um one of the things i wanted to talk about was initial setup this particular customer thought there was something wrong and there kind of was uh but it actually stemmed from um not setting things up correctly in the beginning so i figured i'll show you guys how it works and i'll show you what was done incorrectly and how to uh, avoid it which is very simple so if you look at uh this caliper um this was a caliper in question, and I noticed right away this piston was way out of the bore, and uh, what we call the inboard piston, so this would be on the inside of the car, is virtually uh, sucked all the way in the bore. Knowing that uh, that's how that was laid out, I then looked at the uh, rotor, and I noticed that there was a ton of wear on uh, this rotor. You can actually see that step in there, and that should not be, especially with the uh, limited amount of miles and runs on this setup. Uh, but the inside, which would correlate with the inboard, did not have that step. Um, just a very faint, normal wear and tear type of stuff. So it led me to believe the pad was dragging on the rotor. So this could happen one of two ways. Uh, if it's set up and it's not spinning freely from the beginning, it's definitely going to you know, drag the pad, have pad wear, because basically with the piston not um, out, you have a pad dragging. So it's just gonna drag and drag and drag until it wears itself to a point where it's freely spinning and it's able to not uh, drag anymore. So I wanted to show you the next step. Obviously we know that this piston is way out, this one's way in. So when the pistons are retracting, um, this one's obviously, the inboard one is actually doing a good job of retracting because it's not wearing on the rotor. But the outboard one, which would be this one, is not retracting. And there's a reason for that. So we'll step onto our uh, caliper. A lot of people have not ever seen the inside of a caliper, but basically it's comprised of a piston, um, which is held to a very tight tolerance, and a, a piston bore. And as you can see in the piston bore, there's actually a groove right here for the seal. And if you look, it's very, I would say not far down in there. Um, we're talking about 100 to 120,000, um, which means that when a piston gets out to that portion of the seal, it doesn't have much support. You can actually see it rock. And when a piston rocks, it, uh, you know, when you're talking about a lot of force, what'll happen is it'll wedge in, it'll wedge into the bore. Um, when a piston wedges into the bore, our technology that allows the pads to retract or the pistons to retract and subsequently a pad is no longer useful. So when we have a piston out this far, you can actually see um, a good visual. Uh, this is about it. So you figure your seal bore uh, your seal is probably right there, so there's really no, you know, the piston is sitting on the seal, whereas it should be sitting back somewhere in here, and in that, and it should be balanced between the two. Um, if it sits back in here further, it is very square and has almost no movement. Um, like I said, very tight tolerances, and it allows it the piston to pull itself back in the bore when you let off the pedal. So essentially, what had happened with this customer's brakes is because the rotor was not centered properly between the pads in the caliper, um, it was probably set up something like this. It made that piston come way out and this come way out, or stay way in, and the brakes still work. Of course they work. You know, you're just two pistons working with fluid and they operate it, but they're not going to retain that type of retraction. Now, you might say, hey, Doug, this is TBM magic, whatever. This actually is gonna pertain to every style of brake. While our technology is proven to pull pistons back pads back um, keep the caliper stronger all that stuff better than most 
this is something that can carry over to all stuff. So I guess what I'm trying to get at here is that it is very crucial when you're setting up a uh, brake kit originally to center that rotor dead center between the boards so that the pistons operate equally and opposite. Um, you can do this with feeler gauges. You can do this with a variety of different tools. You can even do it with a uh, with drill bits if you wanted to just kind of verify. Now, we tell people typically, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it needs to be real close. So don't get down to the thousands. But in this case, we're talking about a hundred thousand. So one of the things that we did, um, all of our kits come with caliper shims because casting variations, um, especially fabricated spindles, they're gonna vary 20 to a hundred thousand sometimes. This is from a factory style spindle to an aftermarket style spindle. They all share the same quality, which is they're not perfect. Factory tolerances are usually a lot wider and varying on this than an aftermarket style would be because let's face it, a factory caliper goes on, the brakes are gonna drag from day one and they're gonna stop a car. They're not looking for the performance we are. So one of the things that we did, in addition to giving you caliper spacers to move it, uh, if you look at our rotors, they're actually machined differently on both sides. So this is the mounting surface, you can see a step. And then on the other side, there's no step. So, so absolutely, if you're bolting this up, you have the ability to take this rotor and flip it each direction, and that will help space it. And then obviously you have this, the caliper spacers. So use those to your advantage. Um, if you don't, it can cause issues like this. If for some reason you're bolting things up and things don't make sense, don't just run it. Give us a call, we wanna help you. Um, also, right now we are working on all new instructions for all of our kits. There's a couple hundred brake kits in our repertoire. So we're working through some of the more popular ones right now. It's something that we've traditionally not had very good instructions for, but they're coming, I promise. And if you've seen this video later on, there's probably a good chance that you have instructions for your kit. So if something doesn't seem right when you're bolting things up, if the rotor isn't centered perfectly on the caliper, give us a call. We might have a solution. We'd be happy to work through it. It might be as simple as directing you how to flip things and change things a little bit differently. And if not, we'll do our best to make sure that you get what you need to make things work correctly. The main thing here is if that piston gets too far out of the bore, you're gonna have these types of issues regardless of what brand. So we wanna make sure that we set it up properly from the beginning so things function and you get the performance out of your brakes and life that you signed up for when you got TBM brakes. Thanks for tuning in Tech Tip Tuesday. I hope this kind of explains how a caliper works and some of the ways to improve their performance. Like I said, not just TBM, but all of them. Thanks for tuning in guys. We'll see you next time.